In this video, we're going to go through an example of calculating the pressure drop and the flow rate through pipe system that has multiple diameters and minor losses due to the fittings. So here's the problem we're going to look at. We're going to start with a 2-inch nominal schedule 40 pipe, which is 20 meters long, and it's attached to an 18-meter 3-inch nominal schedule 40 pipe. Both pipes are of galvanized steel, and the roughness height for galvanized steel is 0.15 millimeters. The 2-inch pipe has a fully open gate valve installed, and it has a loss coefficient of 0.15. And the expansion coupling, which is used to join the 2-inch and 3-inch pipes, can be described with the loss coefficient given by this expression here, uh, 1 minus A1 over A2 squared. And I need to tell you where that's referenced to, and it's referenced to the smaller pipe diameter, or the larger velocity, when we put it into our equations. Calculate the pressure drop in the piping system for a flow rate of 3.8 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per second. And we're going to use a fluid of hexane, and the density of hexane is 657 kilograms per cubic meter, and a viscosity of 2.97 times 10 to the minus 4 pascal seconds. Okay, so let's start as we always do with our Bernoulli equation. Um, at the one side, pressure term, kinetic energy term, gravitational potential term, the two side, and of course our losses are coming about because of the friction in the pipe and the fittings in the pipe. And in this case, there's no elevation change. It, I'm not sure it, I said it in the question, but we're going to assume there's no elevation change, and that means we can cancel out these two terms here, and we're left with here. Now, we haven't expanded this way quite this way before, but this is my total losses. And so, uh, and in addition, sorry, this is my total losses, which we're going to expand in a second. But in addition now, because pipe 1 and pipe 2 are of different diameters, uh, we will not be able to cancel out this V1 and this V2 term. And so I'll be left with P1 minus P2, one half row, uh, V2 minus V1, plus my losses, the head loss times rho g. And when I expand the head loss times rho g, I will have the velocity in the first pipe, so one half row V1 squared times FL1 over D1 for the major losses or the friction in pipe 1 and the sum of any loss coefficients times 1 half rho V1 squared uh, to account for the minor losses or the fittings in that pipe. Then in the second piping system it will be characterized by a velocity 2 so I'll have a 1 half rho V2 squared here and the same thing in here relative to pipe 2. So the friction factor in the second pipe L2 over D2 the length of pipe 2 over its diameter and the summation of any of the uh, coefficients, loss coefficients for the fittings in that piping system. And so, what does this pipe look like? We have a 20 meter section at a diameter 1, a 2 inch nominal pipe, and we're told that we have a fully open gate valve in that section of pipe, and we have this expansion coupling and then an 18 meter section of the three inch pipe. So this is two inch, schedule 40. This is three inch, schedule 40. There's my section one, there's my section two, and there's my expansion. So this total length is 20 meters. And this total length here was 18 meters. So that's what my system looks like. And we can see that there is one uh, fully open gate valve in the smaller pipe. And we have a loss coefficient for it. We have this expansion here. And we have a way to calculate the loss coefficient for this and describe it uh, relative to the velocity in this, in this section of the pipe. And then there are no fittings, actually in the three inch pipe. So let's carry on with our problem now that we have a good picture of what it looks like. And the first thing we're going to have to do is look up what the definition of a schedule 40 nominal two inch and nominal three inch. So if we go to the tables wherever you want to find them, these are a standard definition. There is only one correct answer for this. What we're looking for is the inside diameter for a schedule 40 pipe. And essentially the way these things work, if you look at them, is that these standards will provide the outer diameter, and then the different schedule numbers will be thinner or thicker pipe walls, depending on the pressure requirements that you have to hold with your pipe. 
and so the inner diameter will change as the pipe thickness changes. But for our purposes, all we want to do is look up this. So a nominal 2-inch Schedule 40 pipe has a diameter of 5.252 centimeters, while a 3-inch has an inside diameter of 7.792 centimeters. I can convert each of those to uh, meters and multiply by, square it and multiply by pi over 4 in order to get the flow area. So that's the inside flow area for each of those. So now this is in meters squared because I first converted these to meters squared before doing my area calculation. I've just rewritten here for convenience the length of our pipe, 20 meters in the 2 inch pipe, 18 meters in the 3 inch pipe. And now given that defined flow rate of 3.83 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per second, I can divide by the respective pipe area to get the velocity that we see in, in the 2-inch pipe and the velocity in the 3-inch pipe. From that velocity, I can calculate my Reynolds number. I know my density for hexane. I know my viscosity for hexane. And I know my inside diameter here. And so I can calculate these two Reynolds numbers. In the 2-inch pipe, of course, it's higher. The fluid has to move faster, 2.038 times 10 to the 5. And in the 3-inch pipe, it's 1.374 times 10 to the 5. Now I can calculate my relative roughness. I'm given an absolute roughness height of 0.15 millimeters. I need to make sure I convert that into consistent units. But if I divide that roughness height in the same units as the diameter of the pipe, I will get the correct value for the relative roughness shown here. And of course, it doesn't matter if I do that in millimeters, meters, or centimeters, as long as they're both in the same units will get the correct non-dimensional relative roughness. And from that, I can go to either my Moody diagram or my calculator, or in my case, the function that I implemented in, my, in Python in my Jupyter notebook, and ask for the friction factor at that rounds number, and that, this rounds number, and this relative roughness. And I get a value in the 2-inch pipe of 0 0.02649. When I repeat that with this relative roughness and this Reynolds number, I get this value of 0 0.02448 for the flow in the 3-inch pipe. Next, I need to solve for the minor losses so that I can put this together into my equation. And what did I have? I had in the 2-inch pipe, I had a gate valve, 0 .01, uh, 0 0.15. And if I evaluate that expression for the expansion using the area ratio squared A1 and A2, which I had in the previous table, uh, I can evaluate that that expansion is 0 0.2978. And when I add these two together, I get the total loss coefficient for all of the things that are associated with the 2-inch pipe. And of course, I didn't have any in the 3-inch pipe because the expansion was associated with the first pipe, and I didn't have anything on the other pipes. Um, we have neglected any entrance and exits. We weren't given any information as to entrances or exits. We'll see that further when we look at reservoirs and discuss that in more detail. In this example, there is no uh, loss coefficient in the 3-inch pipe. So now we can put that into our equation, of course, P1 minus P2. We had this first term that was related to the change in velocity or the change in kinetic energy. And then we had all of the losses in the second term related to the 2-inch pipe or the first pipe that I've called 1 here. And then all of the losses in the second pipe uh, that I've called V2 and use the subscript 2 for all of the major and minor losses in the second pipe. Plugging in my values, the density of hexane, the velocity in the second pipe, the velocity in the first pipe. Uh, again, the density, the velocity in the, let's correct that, 1.754 and 0.7969 and 0.7969 and 1.754. Don't know how I slipped a decimal in each of those, my apologies. And when we plug in all of these values, what we find is that, not surprisingly, we have a negative term here. And of course, if you remember from your Bernoulli, that when we have a deceleration, we have a pressure recovery. That is, when we slow down the fluid going from the smaller pipe to the larger pipe, the pressure will increase, and therefore I get a negative value for this pressure drop as I have pressure recovery due to that deceleration in that pipe. Next I have this term here, which was all of the both the major and the minor losses in the first pipe, and that is 10.65 kilopascals, 
and then I have the major and minor losses in the second pipe, the larger pipe, which is only 1.18 kilopascals. Adding it all together, I get 11,027 pascals. And of course, with the precision of the numbers given in the question, I re that's really too much precision. And so I'm going to give a final answer as 1.1 times 10 to the 4 pascals, or of course, I could call that 11 kilopascals. And there's the pressure drop in this combined pipe with two different diameters. Of course, here is where I have implemented that in my Jupyter Notebook, just to make life a little bit easier for myself. You can see on this side where I put in all of these variables here and how I've calculated those three terms that I've used to put those numbers there. And here's the output that it gave me, which I've used to fill in the information on this, notwithstanding the fact that I slipped the decimal on those two velocities. Sorry about that.